Hey there, interwebs, and welcome back to How Fascinating. First of all, shame on you. Assuming you're watching this on the day it came out, and it came out on the intended date, that means it's April 1st, or April Fool's Day, and you never go on the internet on April Fool's Day. That's going to be especially rough this year, since it means you can neither go outside nor go online. At time of writing, I'm stuck at home due to the spread of coronavirus disease 2019, or just COVID-19 for short. Don't worry about me, though. I'm not showing any symptoms, and spending all day inside working in front of a computer is only a minor deviation from my usual routine of spending all day inside working in front of a computer. Honestly, the biggest crimp in my routine is that now my daily walks in the woods for some time alone are, and I swear this is true, full of other people who are also trying to get out of the house while avoiding contact. I've been in hole-in-the-wall bars less crowded than the walking trails near my house right now. Guys, social distancing by retreating to the woods doesn't work if everybody's doing it. That little annoyance aside, I also have adequate medical supplies at hand. Well, pen-adequate medical supplies at any rate. I don't have any hand sanitizer or surgical masks, but I do have a full arsenal of pokey sticks and my plague doctor's mask. It forms about as good of a seal around the nose and mouth as an improperly fitted surgical mask, and let's be honest, most people can't secure a surgical mask properly anyway. So, is it effective protection? That's what I'm here today to discuss. I put it to you that the plague doctor's outfit may have been history's first semi-effective hazmat suit. As a matter of fact, if you go to the Wikipedia page for the Plague Doctor's costume, one of the pages in the See Also subsection at the bottom is the hazmat suit, and another is the gas mask. After all, the most immediately recognizable component of any Plague Doctor costume is the beaked mask. It's sine qua non to the whole outfit. Without it, you're just a goth Clint Eastwood. With it, you're a trusted medical professional. Or just a Kenku who's into BDSM. Now, you may be wondering, why did these people wear bird masks and dress in all black? Aren't black birds like crows and ravens supposed to be bringers of ill omen and death? Well, you're half right. Ravens were considered to be harbingers of doom, but the resemblance to birds was coincidental. You see, form follows function, and for the form of the doctor's mask to make any sense, you have to understand the history of epidemiology. That's the study of the distribution and determinants of disease. Prior to germ theory, humanity didn't really know why people got sick, but we still had our theories. By God, did we have our theories. In the early to mid-17th century, during the height of the Plague Doctor costume's popularity, one of the leading beliefs was what we now call miasma theory. It posited that bad smells were what spread disease and made people sick, and before I go any further, I want to make one thing abundantly clear. The people of the past weren't stupid. They were just ignorant, and there's a big, important difference. Ignorance is, at its most basic level, not knowing something. Stupidity is knowing something is a bad idea, but doing it anyway. Say, for example, going out and socializing after the CDC expressly told you to stay the hell inside and take some personal time. Anyway, the people of the past noticed that the sick, dying, and dead smelled really bad, and the people who spent a lot of time around them, encompassed in their stench, tended to get sick shortly thereafter as well. Furthermore, things which they knew made them sick, such as raw sewage and rotten meat, also smelled awful. Put yourself in their shoes. If it looks like a duck and it smells like a duck, then bad smells probably make you a sick duck. Sick duck. Thanks, autocorrect. Obviously, the plague is something everyone wished to avoid, like... Well, like the plague. To combat this sickening miasma and protect themselves from infection, the doctors had to find or create some device which would shield them from the stench. They needed a nosegay, one which they could wear at all times when on duty. Thus was created the Plague Doctor's Mask. Its long snout could be used to contain an entire spice cabinet's worth of pleasant-smelling items. This panoply of pleasant and protectively potent potpourri historically included, but certainly wasn't limited to, herbs such as lavender and mint, camphor, and dried roses and other flowers. Having packed my own mask in the past with a cheesecloth sachet of mint, lavender, and vanilla, I can assure you with empirical evidence that you won't smell anything else for as long as you've got it strapped in place. The doctor's mask would be combined with a full hood, closely fitted at the edges where it met the face, and the eyes were covered with glass lenses, ensuring that air would have to enter through the holes at the tip of the snout and become perfumed before it reached the wearer. Barely related, but nonetheless interesting tangent, the bird with the shortest beak is the kiwi. This is because beak length, scientifically, is measured as the distance from the tip to the nostrils, and kiwis' nostrils are located at the end of their beak for better sniffing out prey on the ground. Getting back to plague doctors, their masks needed a long area in front of the nose and mouth to store their dank stash. They weren't originally made to evoke birds any more than World War I-era gas masks were meant to evoke elephants. It's just the shape they happened to take on. If you take a look at this very early model doctor's mask, you can see that it has barely any resemblance to the much more avian designs which would follow. People simply notice that the masks look kind of like beaks and ran with that motif when making masks in the future. The plague doctors didn't wear just the masks, though. 
In addition to their distinctive face coverings, the docks also wore black broad-brimmed hats and overcoats which reached their ankles, as well as gloves, leggings, and boots. All of these were made from treated leather or waxed canvas, which created a water-resistant barrier against assorted, sorted bodily fluids. This design is generally attributed to Charles de Lorme, chief physician to King Louis XIII of France circa 1619. He called for the mask to have, quote, a nose half a foot long, shaped like a beak, filled with perfume with only two holes, one on each side near the nostrils, but that can suffice to breathe and to carry along with the air one breathes the impression of the drugs enclosed further along in the beak, unquote. De Lorme specifically modeled the suit in its entirety to cover from head to toe, protecting the wearer from disease just like a soldier armed cap was protected by his suit of armor. And, just as a knight in shining armor was armed with his mighty sword, so too did the plague doctors wield their trusty poking sticks. Oops, I meant to say multi-use medical devices for probing, jabbing, and whacking of the medical variety. These wooden canes were used to take a patient's pulse, point out areas which required attention, remove clothing from victims, and to examine bodies, both living and not living, all without touching them. They could also be used to keep people away in what I'm going to call violently proactive social distancing. If I can smack you, you're too close. You may scoff at the crude nature of their implements, but think about it. If your job requires you to hang around sick people all day, and you, presumably, don't want to get sick yourself, not touching them is a pretty good place to start. That being said, the doctors used the same pokey sticks on everyone, so they probably passed the plague around faster than a hip flask in an insincere Alcanon group, but hey, you take the rough with the smooth. While the core principle underpinning miasma theory turned out to be incorrect, that doesn't mean the tools and techniques based on it didn't work. It is, after all, hard to design something to protect you from bad smells which doesn't act as a crude respiratory mask, since that's essentially what it is, and thick, waxed garments keep the germs off as well as the stink. The doctor's prod rods helped them to distance themselves from their patients, and all of this combined to form a level of effective protection in what I'm going to say was history's first hazmat suit. Thanks for watching, remember to wash your damn hands, and have a fascinating day.